first like to start out with a, a moment of gratitude. Uh, I'm a lowly business owner for a small little company in Chicago, and having being here in this room with listening to all of the academics uh, here has been like kind of mind-boggling for me um, and really super exciting. Um, and also, it's 4.30 on Thursday. Thank you for staying around. <laughs> so I'm going to start by taking a cue from Lisa and telling a personal story. If I blow it, uh, given that it is 4.30 on Thursday, I fully expect you to throw scones at me. Um, I, my company's called Mighty Bytes. We've been around for 20 years. We're a scrappy little digital agency. We build websites. We create software. We run digital marketing campaigns. We do that for clients like YMCA and Feeding America and Allstate and a number of different uh, organizations. Uh, we've been doing this for a very long time. In 20, 2011, we became a certified B Corp. Um, and so what that means is that we went through this very rigorous assessment to uh, kind of align purpose and profit within the organization so that not only are we a for-profit that has a money initiative and driven to make money, but that we're aligning that with purpose and, and, and you know, taking that with a mission-driven uh, kind of approach to it and, and can keeping a balance between those things. So every two years we go through an assessment. Um, it's a rather rigorous assessment, but it serves as kind of our roadmap or our blueprint for creating a better company. Um, it has five categories in it, so environment, workers, governance, community, and customers. And under each of those categories, there are literally dozens of questions about how you run your business. And so there are a lot of questions about do you do customer, do, what, how many of your customers are aligned with your mission and aligned with the greater, greater good of, of, of society? Uh, do you do community service? Do you have open books policy? Do you treat your workers, give you, do you give them a living wage? Is the, is the, do you have minorities in leadership positions? Do you, is there an exponential ratio between the lowest paid and the highest paid employees? And then finally, uh, there are a lot of questions about supply chain in the environmental category. So as a small, scrappy little digital agency, we were kind of like, well, we don't really have a supply chain. We have pixels and people. So what does that really actually mean? Um, so we went through and kind of, as a company, went through kind of a little design thinking, human-centered design exercise and said, well, how do we figure out what this means for our customers and for society and, and, and being a B Corp? And we brought us, brought us to this question, how can we build sustainability principles into our company's DNA? And then also, how can we make that matter to our clients and stuff? And so we kind of struggled through a virtual life cycle assessment. None of us are academics, we're all practitioners, so we really didn't know what we were doing, but we're like, yeah, this sounds about right. We should, we should do it this way. So we came up with a framework for building more sustainable websites. And so we went and approached our clients with this and said, hey, we've got this great new way of building clients. And they were either completely be bewildered or just didn't care at all. And, and, and so we're like, all right, well, we gonna need to reframe our approach here. Um, and, and most of them were kind of like sustainable websites. I didn't know that was a thing. And, and you know, the internet has an environmental impact. I don't understand. And so we came up with this tool we decided awareness was kind of our, our biggest hurdle. Our first hurdle was to kind of create awareness around this idea that there is an env environmental impact to pixels require electricity, et cetera, et cetera. So we created this tool called EcoGrader, and it's based on HubSpot's website grader, so which gives you a simple process of putting a URL in and hitting grade me, and it gives you a report uh, and gives you kind of a little score based on a bunch of performance metrics and efficiency metrics as well as green web hosting. Uh, so it gives you this kind of little report. Uh, there's a, a dashboard up at the top, and then if you dig deeper, there's a bunch of different reports on performance optimization, findability, et cetera. Um, so the idea was to give people a really simple, easy way to kind of understand what, what the environmental impact of their website might be. Uh, in five years, we've crawled almost 1.7 million websites. So we have a, 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 an interesting collection of, of data on, on, you know, kind of sustainable websites. And so the average score of those 1.7 million websites was 52. And the criteria that we used was uh, findability, how quickly can someone find your content or your website? Uh, usability, uh, does it work across devices and platforms? Uh, is it, is it user-friendly in, 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 you know, measurable ways? Uh, performance optimization, how quickly do the assets load? And then finally, does it use green hosting? And um, we use the uh, Green Web Foundation's API for green hosting database there. They're based out of Sweden, so maybe a couple of you might have heard of them. What we uh, got out of that is in our, in our 1.7 million URLs 
is that the average score for findability, which is kind of like an SEO rank, was 1.25 out of 10, so clearly room for improvement. Usability, like just so that's a score on responsive design, whether or not something that you create works across devices and platforms, that was 46%, which is a little better, but still not awesome. Uh, performance optimization, like how fast things download, was 30 out of 100, and green hosting was only 3% of the URLs crawled. So there's clearly room for improvement here, and so we've been trying to you know, take into task of helping our clients use this information to better understand what it is that we do. But not only just our clients, there are 560,000 agencies that do what I do in the world. 120,000 of them are in the United States where I live. Um, every single one of them are making hosting and, and design decisions based on, their for, on behalf of their clients. Um, so there's an opportunity to educate those agencies and say there's a better way of doing this and we can improve this and this, here's the data to prove it or to show it. Uh, so we have kind of, as a scrappy little practitioners group, we've uh, amassed a group of, of organizations. Uh, we're building a community around these ideas and, and we've kind of slowly uh, you know, amassed companies and many of these are other, are there other B Corps that we've you know, collaborated with on, on certain things. Um, one of the reasons it was so exciting for me to be here was because there are a lot of gaps in our data because we're business owners um, and hearing that there are studies out there and that many of you have written that actually fill in those gaps is really super exciting to us. So I'm just going to quickly close with a couple uh, resources that our practitioner community has put together um, and then that'll be it. Uh, so we created a sustainable web design blog. Uh, it's a microsite at sustainablewebdesign.org, uh, and it kind of walks through some of the stats. I think there, some of the stats are a little outdated now after being here for a few days and learning a few things. Um, the B Impact Assessment is the tool that we use for measuring our impact. They have, uh, there are 2,500 of us B Corps around the world, um, but 50,000 companies have used it to measure their impact. So if you go to bianalytics.net, there's an actual collection of this kind of impact data, which is, which is kind of exciting. There is a conference called Sustainable UX uh, that it takes place every February. It's a day-long uh, Google Hangouts conference, essentially, um, and it's global, uh, and, and we've had speakers from all over the, all over the world. Uh, there is a, the W3C has a sustainable web design community group that I encourage anybody here to, to join. Um, and then I wrote a book on this topic, too. So that's all I got. Thanks very much. <laughs>